there bookworms, welcome to another video, I'm so happy to see you again. My name is Annie and today I want to talk about some popular books that I didn't like. So I know this is a very controversial topic and because of that before I start I just wanted to say that I don't intend to hurt anyone's feelings with this video. These are just my personal opinions on some books and if you like them or they may even be among your favorite books then I'm honestly happy for you and just because I didn't like the book doesn't mean that it's bad or your opinion is invalid in some way. I know that we all have different reading tastes and I honestly think that it's great. So again I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, I don't want to hate on any book or author. These are just my personal opinions on some popular books that I didn't enjoy. <laughs> And I'm gonna start this video right away with what is probably the most controversial opinion in this video because the first book I want to talk about is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. So in case you didn't know, this is the first book in a way. Fantasy trilogy that is based on or inspired by African culture and mythology and it is about this fictional kingdom of Orisha where suddenly many years ago magic just disappeared and the kingdom is ruled by a king who wants to eradicate all traces of magic that are somehow left behind. And then we have the main character Zeli and her mother was a magician but she was killed when Zeli was a little girl and Zeli is haunted by that till today and then she goes on a quest to bring back the magic into Orisha. So uh, the premise of this sounds really amazing and when this book came out some years ago it was everywhere. It was everywhere on Goodreads, I believe it was also everywhere on Booktube. I didn't watch much Booktube during that time but you couldn't miss this book even if you tried. This book was everywhere. And initially I didn't even want to read it because this was during a time where I already felt like my interest in YA fantasy was fading and I was already getting more into adult fantasy. But then one day I found it at the library and I was like, well, okay, now it's there and you might as well read it and give it a chance because everybody seems to love this book so much. And unfortunately, I didn't. I read it at 2.5 stars in Goodreads and I really struggled with finishing the book. So, but at first let me talk about the one thing that I did like and that was the inspiration by African mythology because you could really see how much the author thought about this and how important this topic was to the author and that she really put a piece of her soul into this book and into the mythology and the magic system and everything. There were all those African names and all the spells were in this African language that was really authentic and very well done. But other than that, I think the book was just a generic YA fantasy like I've read hundreds before. So the plot didn't offer anything new. We have this main character who lost a parent when she was very young and then she has to team up with some unlikely allies and go on a quest to bring back magic. So this is something that we've all read before. And in addition to that, I also didn't like the characters. Of course, we have some romances into this book and all these romances were so cliche. The only reason the romances seemed to be there was that apparently every YA fantasy needs a romance or two and I didn't feel any of this. I couldn't establish a connection to the characters and while the writing wasn't bad it just didn't grip me, it didn't pull me in and the African mythology aspect wasn't enough for me to love this book. So I somehow made it through the end and towards the end the plot also picked up in pace and it was more exciting and there was more action but by this point I had already lost interest and I was already so bored so all I wanted was to somehow finish this book so that I didn't have to mark it as a DNF and well obviously I didn't continue with the series and I don't plan to and I honestly was a bit disappointed that I didn't like this book but then I didn't even want to read it in the first place so maybe I just shouldn't have read it. The next one I talk about is another book that is already kind of old and it is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is the first in a dystopian. Well, originally it was a trilogy, but I think now there are four books. So anyway, this takes place on Mars and it is about the main character Darrow and he is a member of the Reds, which is the lowest case in their system. And he works together with the other Reds to make the surface of Mars livable for future generations. But then one day he finds out that it's all a lie and the upper cases and the rich people and royalty and everyone are already living on the surface. And then he decides to riot and to bring the system down from within. So this is an adult novel and I really wanted to read it because it honestly sounds awesome. And back at the time it sounded like something I would absolutely love. And I'd heard before that the book was really harsh and kind of brutal, more so than YA. And I was like, okay, wow, well, let's see. Let's just give this a go and I ended up being so bored with this book and my main problem with it was that it was in my opinion trying too hard to be amazing. So the premise is amazing and I also didn't mind the brutality or anything but from a certain point on it just started to be so repetitive because when Dara decides to infiltrate the system and bring it down he has to get himself transformed to look like a member of the gold case which is the highest and the ruling case and then he has to enter a deadly competition against other young members of the high cases and this competition was basically the 
the Hunger Games on Mars. <laughs> so uh, I like the idea behind it and I like that there were all those allies and team ups that changed but this whole competition part went on for so long. It went on and on and was so repetitive and I really didn't care about what was going on anymore after a certain point because this also wasn't something new. I mean, I've read The Hunger Games, you've read The Hunger Games, you know how it goes, you know what The Hunger Games are. This is basically The Hunger Games on Mars, just within another society system. So another thing was that I couldn't really get into the writing style. I don't even know why it just didn't work out for me. This is not the book's fault, this is just something that also negatively impacted my rating of this book. What really bothered me in the end was that the author in the acknowledgement writes something to the readers, something along the lines of you'll bloody damn love this book. And well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Brown, but I didn't. <laughs> so I even read the second book um, some years later because I thought I'd give the series another chance and maybe I would like it more when I was a little bit older. But I also couldn't get into the second book and I didn't like this much more than the first. And then I decided to abandon the series and I won't be reading the third or the fourth book. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is an adult science fiction book and it is another book that takes place on Mars and you may have already guessed it. It is The Martian by Andy Weir. This is a very, very popular book and I thought this was something I was gonna love. I tried to read this just last year and unfortunately it was a DNF for me. So I rarely DNF books because I feel like there is something good and something positive in every book and I always feel like I have to give the book another chance and another chance and a third, a fourth, a fifth chance because maybe I will still like it. But The Martian was one of the very few books that I DNF. I gave it about 150 pages and then I just couldn't do it anymore. So in case you don't know, this book is about a biologist named Mark and he gets left behind on a mission on Mars and then he's on Mars all on his own and has to survive there somehow. And I knew this book was gonna be sciencey but I thought I wouldn't mind because usually I like my science fiction books to be a bit sciencey as long as I can still understand it. And that was my first problem with The Martian. I didn't understand anything. It was way too sciencey for me and way too descriptive. When Mark is stranded on Mars, he of course um, has to make plans and come up with ideas about how to survive up there. And this could have been very, very interesting, but I just hated the writing style. I couldn't get into it. There was no action and no suspense. He just told the reader what he was doing and what he was thinking about and then how he made things work and then some problems occurred and of course because he's super clever he came up with a solution and he solved the problem and this went on and on and then in between he always tries to be funny but I'm really sorry I didn't think he was funny. Then there are some other chapters from the perspective of the scientists back at NASA down um, on Earth. And I thought uh, the book would pick up then and I thought maybe there are now more character interactions and they're obviously trying to get in contact with Mark up on Mars and to get him back down to Earth. But I couldn't establish a connection to any of these scientists guys and I also found those chapters to be uh, kind of boring and I didn't connect with the writing style at all. So after 150 pages, I just decided that this book wasn't for me. I haven't seen the movie yet, maybe I will someday because maybe I will like it more if I can see the things playing out on the screen. But since I didn't like the book, the movie is not very high up on my priority list, honestly. And finally, book number four that I want to talk about is another one that's already quite old and it is The Host by Stephanie Mayer. This is a standalone and I um, probably should say that this is a science fiction because this is what it's labeled at. But honestly, it's more of a romance hiding behind a science fiction context. So the only science fiction stuff about this book is that it takes place in the future and it is about humanity being invaded by an alien life form called souls. And these souls invade humans' minds and take over their lives and their bodies and everything. And this book is about the main character, Melanie, and she is part of a small resistance group who are still hiding from the souls. And one day a soul finds her when she's on some sort of supply run and invades her, but Melanie is so strong and fights back against it. And then she shares her mind with the soul, then Wanda. And Wanda takes Melanie's body back to the secret encampment of the resistance. And when the others find out that she's not Melanie anymore, there are two groups. One of them wants to uh, kill her and get rid of the alien and the other um, is curious about Wanda because she doesn't seem very dangerous or hostile or anything. And Wanda, in fact, isn't dangerous. Instead, she just wants to find out how the humans live. And she also kind of has to come to terms with that she stole Melanie's mind. I'm not the biggest fan of Stephanie Mayer's Twilight, but I really wanted to read The Host because it is one of the favorite books of one of my close friends. But unfortunately, it really wasn't for me. We mustn't forget this is Stephanie Meyer, and when Stephanie Meyer writes science fiction, it is basically still a romance. 
So the writing style in this was honestly great. It was very readable, very fluent. And um, there were always moments when I thought like, wow, now it picks up and I want to know more. But then it got so boring again. My main problem with this book, really, it was just boring. But nothing happened. And then of course there's also a super cliched love triangle. Of course we mustn't forget that this book is already quite old and back then love triangles were the thing in YA books. But still I only read this last year and I was so so annoyed by it. And in addition to the love triangle I couldn't stand Melanie's boyfriend Jared who is of course part of the love triangle because he was so controlling. He was this typical alpha male character he was so toxic, I honestly hated him. I couldn't stand this guy, he made me so sick. The other male half of the love triangle, Ian, I liked him more. He was honestly a very decent guy, but towards the end he too did some things where I was like, no way Ian, are you serious right now? So I really couldn't get behind the love triangle, it was really annoying me. And the book itself, I've said it before, it was just boring. It was way too long, it could have been like 200 or 300 pages shorter. I really struggled with finishing this book. I started it, I think, in the first half of um, last year, the first half of 2020. And I was determined to finish this book in 2020 because I didn't want to drag it with me over to 2021. And I am honestly so happy and so proud that I managed to finish this book. So this was a two stars. I was actually wondering whether I was reading the same book as everybody else because this has quite high ratings on Goodreads, but this book wasn't for me at all. So those were four, I think, very popular books that I unfortunately didn't enjoy. Like I said in the beginning, those are just my personal opinions. And if you enjoyed one of these books, then please tell me down below in the comments and tell me what you liked about the books because I love to hear other people's opinions. My next video will probably be a more positive one again, so stay on the lookout for that. If you still enjoyed today's video, despite my controversial opinions, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel or to my book vlog that I've linked in my description box. That was it for today's video. Happy reading, guys. Bye-bye.